You're a philosopher. You've been described as a Timothy Leary for the viral video age. What sorts of things are you waxing poetic about these days? Pretty much every time I stumble upon an idea that captures my imagination, you know, something articulated in a counterintuitive way, right? A, a different spin on technology, a different spin on the future of humanity. That kind of gets my, my motors like going really, really fast. Tell me about your series, Shots of Awe. So Shots of Awe came from a desire to use media, to use cameras, to immortalize inspiration. I, I refused to accept that these moments had to be passing moments. I was like, no, 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 no. I choose to film them, to record them, to capture them, and it was a way of gaining control over these experiences. And I could it, create a, a, an intersubjective communication with somebody else because I actually got to show you what it was like to be in my head when I had this epiphany. So shots of awe are philosophical espresso shots, this kind of condensed trailers for ideas. What they hint at is the exception, a vision of something more. Tell me about your process, your ritual, how you are able to come up with these a stream of conscious riffs. I started getting into this idea of flow states because I read this article that talked about doing brain scans on freestyle rappers when they were improvising. And then they did brain scans on them when they were reciting memorized lyrics. And what the studies found, a part of the brain that is responsible for our self-editing, our sense of self-consciousness, that part goes dim during the freestyle. So essentially, you're getting out of your own way. It's like that line in Black Swan that says perfection is not just about control, it's also about letting go. So I can have all my notes and my thoughts and my ideas and this and that, but that's, then I go for the walk. I go into the woods, I go to Sea Ranch, California, I go to Big Sur, I go to some park. And just the stroll and the disconnection from distraction gets your brain daydreaming. When you're in daydreaming mode, you start to do a little bit of the lateral thinking. So you start connecting this to that to this, and you, have to, so you start to go through the aha moments. And if you are lucky enough to have the camera around, you're capturing that real-time flow. It's creativity happening in real time. I mean, it literally feels like channeling. So for me, I figured out how to create my flow state. And the results tend to be these riffs that people really love, and they're like, what, there was no script? Like you, that was a completely extemporaneous stream of consciousness. I'm normally kind of an introvert and kind of shy in most social situations. But if the conditions are right, like a flame, it emerges. We never have a true accurate rendition of reality because it's all about our perception, our projections, our longings. Our romantic partners are creations and we are the creators. So you said if you can create that flow state, how do you create it? I have found that the best way is to take yourself out of context. So a new experience, a new space, and a new place so that I transcend what Michael Pollan calls the been there's and done that's of the adult mind and I can enter the consciousness of the child. I can be in wonderment. I can be curious about everything around me. So rest, relaxation, novel spaces, novel environments, disconnection, disconnection from the everyday, disconnection from your daily responsibilities, disconnection from your trivialities. Just a daydream space, a space to dream, to fuse cognition and dream. What happens when you don't achieve that flow? If it's not working, I become just highly anxious. Actually, irritable is probably the best word. I just kind of retreat. I just I withdraw. Can you describe how it feels to be in that state? It feels like unbelievable lucidity. Instant recall. You know, just this capacity to explain what you're feeling and what you're thinking effortlessly. Do we love harder? Do we squeeze tighter? You just feel your best and you perform your best. The minute you choose one thing, you've effectively said no to everything else. And there's a gnawing anxiety in realizing that you can't possibly have it all. I'm like a reality hacker. I'm like literally hacking my ontological reality. I'm studying how to trigger certain moods and modalities, and I'm literally playing with my consciousness so that I can feel how I want to feel when I want to feel it as often as possible. How important is this ritual of achieving that flow state? Hugely important. You are building the foundations for something magical to happen. The ritual is as important as chopping the wood and making sure it's dry before you light the fire. It's providing 
the necessary ingredients for your cognitive salad. It's very, 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 very important. Almost, I would say that it's everything. I hope you were inspired by Jason Silva's ritual and discover your own flow state. This series is so special to me because I learn something new from every person we feature. We have so many more intriguing episodes of rituals coming up, so please, please subscribe to watch them and so much more. And be sure to check out this other episode of Rituals to see how this Hollywood stuntman prepares to get lit on fire. If I'm about to do something and I feel my heart thumping or my hand shaking, then I'll I close my eyes and I, I breathe. There is no other distraction, no other thought. It's just this absolute pinpoint focus of the task at hand.